I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, this is Chrissy Mancini Nichols at Remix. I want to thank you all for joining us today on uh, Remix's webinar for best practices in day to day planning. You're joining us from San Francisco this morning at Remix headquarters, and I'm excited to be here with you and our all star panel of planners from across the country. Uh, again, my name is Chrissy, and I'm the transportation policy manager here at Remix. A little bit about me before joining Remix, um, I worked in transportation policy and finance, mostly in Chicago. So hi to all my Illinois friends out there in the audience. I know many of you are, you are joining us from um, the Midwest. So I just want to go over some ground rules before we begin, and then we'll introduce our panelists and we'll get started. Um, so many of you of you have joined us on Remix webinars before, so you know if you want to ask a question, go ahead and um, ask that in the chat box. We have staff here monitoring the chat box. We also receive lots of questions ahead of time that we're going to answer on today's webinar. Um, and we are recording today's webinar, so we'll email you out a link to the webinar after we're finished and you can send that to your friends and colleagues in case they are unable to join us right now. I'm joined by my colleague Ben Likens, who is a customer success manager here at Remix. Ben, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about our customer success team. Awesome. Thank you, Chrissy. Well, hello, everyone. Oh, we're glad to have you with us today. Like Chrissy said, I'm a customer success manager here with Remix. My background is in transportation planning. I've done a lot of work of planning work in uh, North Carolina and the South Central US area, mostly based out of Arkansas. Um, but the customer success team here at Remix is tasked with helping transit agencies implement Remix and plan top-notch transit. So you're probably familiar with one or two of us across the team, but we all come from similar planning backgrounds, having worked for either transit agencies or local government or consulting firms. So I'm just here for the webinar to answer any technical remix questions that come up. I'll be monitoring the chat and I look forward to uh, hearing from our panelists. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Chrissy. Thanks, Ben. At Remix, we hold webinars because our job is to really help you be successful in planning and implementing transit and using the platform to get the most out of it that you can. And we're learning so much about how you're planning and implementing transit that we want to share those best practices across all our agencies because I guarantee somebody in North Carolina that we're going to hear from today, you may be having similar issues and what you can learn from them and apply to your agency will then help you plan and implement better transit. And we want to share our, the expertise of our customers with you. We have Adam Howe joining us from North Carolina. Adam works currently at the as the transit planning advisory committee's administrator through raleigh north carolina's metropolitan planning organization he is leading the coordination of the wake county transit plan just prior to joining the metropolitan planning organization adam worked for the town of Cary as a transit planner and prior to joining the uh, triangle area of north carolina adam was with maryland's department of transportation secretary's office in their office of policy and government affairs he was working on the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act project coordination. He's also worked with the Baltimore City Mayor's Office on community outreach and stakeholder coordination in relation to light rail investments. He has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and a master's degree in regional planning from Morgan State. We also are joined by Megan Newhouse from Pennsylvania. Uh, Megan is the Director of Operations at Westmoreland Transit. Her tenure at the Authority has almost reached a, a decade. She began her work in paratransit and was responsible for the successful implementation of the Go Westmoreland door-to-door -door rideshare service. And Megan has been quoted as saying she just wants to give people rides. Um, so some fun facts about Megan, she is born and bred in South Western Pennsylvania. She has an MPA in public and nonprofit management from the University of Pittsburgh. And she really has a strong sense of the community where she works because she, this has always been her home. 
She also would love everyone to know that she enjoys 90s hip hop and destroying insect aliens while playing Galaga. She currently has absolutely no free time because she has Irish twins. <laughs> so, um, hi Megan. And we also are joined by Thomas Yule from Alabama. Thomas is from Auburn, Alabama, and after earning his bachelor's in psychology from Auburn, he moved to South Bend, Indiana, where he was with the Michi Michiana Area Council of Governments. Um, he also, at the time, graduated uh, with his master's from Indiana U University, South Bend, and there he received his master's of public affairs. After four years in South Bend, he and his wife moved to Birmingham, Alabama, where he is now a planner at the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority. So thanks to all of our uh, panelists joining us today. First up, I'm gonna turn it over to Thomas, who's going to talk about using Remix to communicate with consultants. Take it away, Thomas. All right, thanks, Chrissy. Um, so as Chrissy said, my name is Thomas Jewell. I'm a planner at the Birmingham Jefferson County Transit Authority. And recently, over, over the past 12 months, we have been working with a consultant on our transit development plan. Um, the biggest component of which was our route optimization. Um, so basically looking at our network of routes, seeing how they serve the community currently, where we're doing well, where we have room to improve, and then making a series of recommendations on route modifications, route additions, route eliminations, um, to make the, the system more viable and up to date for how Birmingham, the Birmingham metro area looks now. Um, the consultant we worked with was the primary on the TDP project and the BJCTA planning staff assisted them um, with the route optimization portion of the project. Um, so I'm going to talk about two major ways that we used Remix in this uh, route optimization effort. The first uh, is our route planning, the actual route planning that we did. The second was our public meetings and our public involvement. Um, so first, with the route planning, we basically use Remix for everything we did, um, all the recommendations, all of the all of the work we did developing the routes was done in Remix. Um, probably about fifty percent of the work was kind of done in a group setting around uh, a TV mo or a computer monitor, working as a group, brainstorming. Uh, throwing everything at it and seeing what stuck and that's where a lot of our like kind of big breakthroughs came through a lot of the like aha moments and then the other 50% was individual work on each each of us working on our computers um, kind of kind of it's kind of where we kind of grinded out some of the um, some of the ideas that we had in the group setting and kind of fleshed them out to make sure that they actually made sense and then kind of pin like pinpointed it like to where got it to where we wanted it exactly and then at that point we also were sending uh sharing the maps that we were creating and the ideas that we were having um, with each other over email um, using like the share function and remix and then sending a url um, so that they were both both of those kind of methods achieve different things, like I said, we're able to have like great aha moments working as a group, and then we're able to kind of, like I said, flesh everything out um, in the individual setting. Um, I wanna just give a couple great things that Remix was able to do um, in our route optimization, and then a couple things that I would do differently in the future. For the positives, um, it, it took just like a fraction of the time that it would have taken how we previously planned routes. Um, you know, I, I kind of had always used um, GIS or Google Maps or Google Earth and Excel, kind of like comparing GIS with the Excel to kind of figure out the timetable um, and then figure out like how much it would cost 
And um, using Remix, we really were able to cut that down just to a fraction of the time it usually takes, uh, usually took for us to kind of do route planning. Um, and that was able to allow us to, you know, our, our deliverables were delivered um, on or ahead of schedule and it made us look good, which was always good. So, um, and then some of the suggestions I would have, the, the biggest thing is nomenclature, how you name routes and how you name maps. Um, I know Remix has the kind of funny uh, Star Wars placeholder route names. Um, you really do need to look at those as placeholders. Like, do not send routes and maps to your coworkers and the consultant like with those with those routes in them because it will just confuse them. Uh, that that happened quite a bit. Um, so we were we kind of had to get a hold of that. And then in terms of maps, this is where things like kind of really we we let things kind of go off the rails a little bit here. Um, we got into bad habit of, you know, sending a map to a coworker or the consultant and they would say, oh, you know, this is a great idea, but I think I should tweak it a bit and send it back. And it would come back as like, like it would go to them as like TDP um, version one. And instead of coming back as like TDP version two, it would come back as like copy of TDP version one. Um, and then, you know, I think, uh, we ended up with a couple like copy of copy uh, maps, and and I, I think I was the biggest culprit. I I got in the bad habit of like just putting like like having a great idea like oh I have to get this into Remix, and I would just name it like blah or like like save this or like this is important, and sending it to someone with that name as the map still. So I would just be really careful on how you're naming things, especially the maps and the routes. Um, so, so that kind of sums up uh, the route planning portion. The other portion I mentioned was our public meetings. As part of this route optimization, we had two rounds of public meetings. The first was basically taking our existing system to the public and asking them what they thought of it and what they would do to improve it. And then our second round was after we had developed these recommendations for the network, um, bringing it back to the public and saying, hey, this is what we came up with, what do y'all think? Um, the first round, we did not use Remix. Um, and people kind of were already familiar with the system, so it was, you know, it worked reasonably well. Um, I didn't really feel as if people connected with it or grasped it as, as well as they could have. Um, the second round, when we came back to the public with our actual recommendations, it, we, we had the luxury of most of our locations that we did these meetings at. We had like TV monitors or a projector that we had a laptop hooked up to that was running Remix. And we, uh, the staff there, were able to navigate around our service area and show people, show the public, um, the different recommendations that we had. And on top of that, you know, sometimes we just let members of the public um, control it themselves and navigate to, to their neighborhood to see kind of what we were suggesting and and uh, see see or or go over to like their employer site to see what we were doing over there, what we were suggesting over there. And I, I had a lot more confidence in the second round in terms of the public engaging with the material and understanding what we were recommending. It, it felt like people connected with it a lot more than just um, like a poster board with a, a map on it. Um, and I think that was really valuable because it seemed like not only were people connecting with it, but they were, it seemed like they felt that they were part of the process. They were part of the recommendations. And that's super valuable when you are making some pretty major changes that could really like 
change the way that people get to and from work. Um, instead of people kind of being adversarial and saying like, I'm not sure about that, they were, they felt like they were part of the recommendations, they were part of that process and they were even, I feel like champions of kind of the plan and they, I believe that they were going out in the community and, and letting people know like, hey, no, this is a great idea, this is actually gonna improve the way that we can get around town. Um, and on top of that, uh, we were able to get a lot of comments from uh, the public at these meetings, they were able to submit comments on the recommendations through Remix. So instead of using like paper and pencil or like having people like kind of interviewing uh, the public, um, a lot we were able to, a lot of that was be able to transition to Remix to where when they were, they were navigating around the system, they were submitting comments and we reviewed those the next day. And those were actually a lot more, I think, valuable than the comments we usually get at public involvement meetings. And uh, uh, like a higher percent of those actually went towards us making meaningful changes to what we were recommending um, versus, you know, in the past where it's just kind of like, oh, okay, that's, uh, I'm not sure if what this comment means or I'm not, that doesn't really work. Um, but so yeah, those were the two uh, major ways that we used Remix when we were working on our transit development plan on the route optimization. Um, I, I really look forward to answering any of your questions that you have um, about how we did this or any of the specifics. Um, and I wanna thank Remix for letting me come talk to you. All right, thank you, Thomas. I think there are some good lessons there on um, when you're communicating with people, especially outside of your departments, thinking about the standardization of the nomenclature and how you're renaming maps and communicating those maps with each other. And I also think you brought up a great point, which is using Remix to make the public feel that they're really a part of the planning process. That's the goal that we're all striving for. So the way the, that you were able to do that is, is just so important and f making the public feel that they're really champions of, their, of the plan and of transit. So thank you. I now want to turn it over to Megan Newhouse joining us from Pennsylvania. Uh, Megan's going to talk about how she used Remix to plan and communicate detours. So take it away, Megan. Thanks, Chrissy. Uh, I just wanted to give everyone some background information about the detour I'm going to be talking about. Uh, it's a major construction project through one of our main street corridors. The project is slated to last 13 months and will significantly affect our routing through that area. This is the second major construction project that we've had in the last six months. Sometimes we joke here in Pennsylvania that we have two major seasons, winter and construction. Uh, the first project for us, unfortunately, was before we had acquired Remix. Uh, the detouring was done over the road with pen and paper, like I'm sure many of you do. Many hours were invested by myself, as well as our road staff, to identify alternate routing, time out the stops, and generally just to make sure that the route would work in real time out there on the road. Uh, by using Remix, we were able to approach our most recent construction project completely different. Um, because the project, like I said, is through one of our main street corridors, this area is made up of mostly businesses. It's a high density corridor with substantial walkability and also linear ability. And the majority of our riders currently using that route in the area are walking to and from the bus stops. So this allowed us some flex on where we wanted to locate the routes. Uh, Remix allowed me to easily plot alternate routing options. I was able to use the existing route that had already been entered into the system, then pull and set the lines to explore what the impact would be financially as well as demographically. Uh, I had the capability to dial into each option and see the length and time necessary to complete the route. This information helped me to identify whether or not the options were possible from the comfort of my own office. Um, we all know that cost is very important, 
but none of the changes that we make matter if we alienate the riders from using the service. The layers function in Remix allowed me to identify whether or not these options would reach the population that is typically transit reliant. And like many of you out there, we are a small operation where the staff members wear many hats. I'm responsible for the planning department because I am the planning department. And being able to access demographic information with the click of a button helped to assure me that I was making the best decision for our riders. I was able to save a lot of time by using Remix to plan this detour. When it was time to finalize the detour route, all I had to do was send my road staff out to make sure that the vehicle could perform the routing on the road. The process was very convenient and considerably less stressful than the first detour that I had to plan without the help of Remix. I now have hope that road construction season here in southwestern Pennsylvania will not completely consume my time in the future. I was also able to utilize the information that I had entered into Remix to communicate these changes to our riders. Uh, because this route is one of our more rural areas, we don't solely rely on social media to reach our ridership base. Yes, we do use Facebook and Twitter, but we still have to distribute paper schedules. We also post notices on our vehicles. I was able to cut and paste the actual detour map from Remix into our schedule and then also onto our agency webpage. And this helps to provide people with that visual that they need to help them identify exactly where they need to go to access the service. And we all know that when it comes to detours, there is no one size fits all solution. I can tell you that my first detour was pieced together very clumsily with little to no information to support the changes that I made. Looking back now, I'm sure there was a better solution out there. But with Remix, I feel confident that I was implementing the best routing option for our riders as well as for the authority. And if anybody has any questions, I'll feel free to answer them. All right, thank you, Megan. I think you raised some important points about how you are the planning department uh, because so many agencies have similar, there's, there's one, uh, one planner and they are, that planner is the planning department. So the fact that you can use Remix to quickly plan your detours, communicate them and get the, them out to the public is immensely helpful and re, uh, reduces the stress that you face every day, especially as you hit construction season. So next up, we're gonna hear from Adam Howe at, in North Carolina, who's going to tell us a little bit about how he's using Remix to budget. Take it away, Adam. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, so, we, in my previous position, I worked for the town of Cary, and I was a transit planner for that organization, and we were tasked, we recently required Remix uh, in about FY well, fiscal year 17, um, and so one of the first major tasks that I was to look at with using Remix was how can we utilize the tool to incorporate budget estimates that will then feed into our annual budget process for the town, uh, as well as help to inform the regional wake transit plan that had just recently passed. Uh, and we have to work with regional entities to then uh, kind of align all of our goals for local and regional services. Uh, so before I switch to a screen to kind of demonstrate how we did that, um, some of the overarching things that are important to note um, is Remix really helps, obviously, as been highlighted from the other uh, presenters today, is that it just saves a lot of time. Um, another piece of background information for the town of Cary for you guys to understand is we take advantage of um, FTA's allowance to do full capital cost of contracting, which makes our costing a little bit easier than others. So we actually lease out um, through a private contractor, all of our services, and we don't own a single asset. Uh, so we do pay one flat hourly rate 
uh, for all of our services, and that helps make it a little bit easier. But it is important for you to understand what your overall operating cost per hour is so that you can have well-informed uh, budgetary estimates to then feed to your governing boards and councils. I can't stress that enough. Um, so um, one of the helpful things, and I will go ahead and switch to the screen here really quick. Hold on one second. Um, so looking in um, the Town of Cary's Remix account here, uh, one thing that Remix helped with time savings is obviously pulling in your current system using GTFS feeds. And so working with the Remix office and the uh, success managers, they were able to help and assist with us learning how to do that. Uh, so I didn't have to go through and draw in and build out our schedules, uh, which was awesome. And so all I would all I would do is then go in through here and make sure that we would go ahead and look at make sure the cost per hour was accurate uh, and so we have a relatively inexpensive cost per hour because we do run cutaways for half of our services uh, and so making sure just double check what the gtfsp pulled in um, and so this is running a sunday version of the service um, but so what you want to do or what we found to be easiest is you have your base budget of all and this is when labeling comes into play to make sure that everything is clear as thomas pointed out earlier um, label it to make it easy for yourself as well as for anybody else that you might think is going to view this uh, so create the base budget uh, and then build up whatever alternates you've come up with for uh, different route alignments of your current system or new route proposals as a part of whatever plan you're looking at and so we went ahead and we did that and we created a ton of scenarios. Uh, and because we had different types of days for different levels of service, we wanted to understand the individual cost of that day. Uh, so we had to build that out as a separate map layer and then have that in as a route to look at the cost of that individual. So if we were to look at, let me make sure I turn this on correctly. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. I'll figure this out eventually. There we go. So right now, if I'm looking at everything that's proposed, we're looking at Sunday FY18 budget estimates for services on all of our current base routes. We're looking at about $270,000 a year. And that helped to inform me then to build in to a, a more extensive Excel sheet that needed to go to our governing boards. Well, here's what we proposed if we were to offer a Sunday level of service that currently didn't exist at the time. Uh, and so we were able to present to them and say, this is actually a relatively inexpensive opportunity to give citizens a mobility option that didn't exist. Uh, and so once they were able to see that number and then we could use this map as a backup just to demonstrate the geographic coverage that their citizens would have access to on a day that they never did before, uh, was actually very powerful for them. And so we also looked at different alignments for a couple of different routes, but then we actually have a very large employment sector um probably our largest in the entire town along this corridor right here of weston parkway which has never had consistent service and we have been trying for years to figure out how to get that on there so we built multiple different um options let me turn that on uh, and so we created an off peak we created a peak uh weekday and then we created several other options just to get people to and from those um centers of business as well as attractors uh, for retail and leisure uh, and so you can see the cost clearly jumped up um, from below if I were to turn off these other Sunday options from our base and so if we want to just look at the options to see if we wanted to implement this new route well then we're right there below half a million dollars a year uh, based on our current operating costs. And so we were able to feed that into a regional model that uh, was a part of the Lake Transit Plan um, to help inform that, to see if it was able to be afforded, number one, and to see if it fell into a priority level that deemed it to be important enough to be funded in the first year. And unfortunately, that level of service was not uh, implemented in this first fiscal year, but it is heavily being investigated as we speak uh, for fiscal year 19 implementation. Um, just some quick takeaways. I, you know, I can't um, emphasize enough to watch your naming schemes for for routes to make sure that you're not confused. Um, if I were to expand it, there now we can kind of see everything that I've named, so that you can truly understand what you're looking at. Um, 
that's really the most important thing. And then um, when we went to present to our management of the town, uh, they were very excited that we had utilized this new tool that we had invested in. Uh, they were interested to learn the time savings and the efficiencies that it provided to us um, on an administrative level. And they were also interested to learn uh, how this could be presented to the public if and when they decided to move forward with any of the options that we were presenting. Uh, at the time, though, we only demonstrated the need for Sunday service for this fiscal year purpose. And so there were no maps necessary to, to use for Remix to demonstrate that as we already provided the geographic coverage on those alignments. Um, but there was no pushback and they really appreciated the um, championing of the tool uh, and the use of it to help inform overall budget details. And so it turned out to be a very good success. Um, and with that, I will take questions as well as other presenters and Chris, I'll hand it back to you. Let me stop this, there we go. All right, thank you, Adam. Um, yes, yeah, so we want to start with our question and answer session part of the webinar. We have already received a lot of questions from you prior to today when you registered, you asked us lots of questions, but keep them coming because we have plenty of time to answer anything you might have in, uh, for the panelists. So I want to start out by uh, Thomas, we have a question for you. And how have you taken the learnings that you've received from communicating with outside agencies and, and people outside of your agency and apply that to the agency, to inside BJCTA? So have you created remix accounts for other departments? Do you share maps? Have you been working more collaboratively with uh, departments outside of planning now that you have uh, a better idea of how to do that because you were working with the consultants? Yeah, so we definitely, the nomenclature, the, the keeping your map names and your route names straight was a, a huge lesson. Um, it sounds like Adam um, kind of started his uh, project uh, knowing that lesson and we kind of learned it as we went along. Um, but um, we, in terms of um, working with other departments, we recently just got a communications and marketing department, which we haven't had for a long time. And they have shown a lot of interest in using Remix. Um, we haven't created any accounts for them yet, but um, we're working with them, showing them you know, what Remix is and how it works and how they might be able to create their own maps instead of having to rely on the planning department to create um, public content, um, being able to do it themselves um, would, would, is something that they're really interested in and could you know, potentially lighten our workload. So um, that's, that's the biggest place that I've seen uh, an interest from other departments in terms of using Remix was that communications department. Okay, excellent. So a question for Megan. Megan, how are you using Remix to create a schedule when you're planning your detours? Right, that's also a great question. Um, when we looked at what we had to do and the amount of time that we had to do it in, just to give you an idea of how we do things here, we are a time transfer system. So we had to assure that we were going to be able to make transfer points with other routes. So planning the detour really limited what we could do and how fast we could do it because we did not want to have to change any of our other routes because of making those transfers. <clears throat> Basically, what I did here was we tried to just keep it as simple and as clean as we possibly could. We looked at the schedule in Remix for the different options that were presented, the inbound and the outbound, how long they were going to take, and if it was feasible for that to work within our current time frame. Um, we didn't want to confuse the public too much by generating an entirely new schedule. 
So we did keep the format of our old schedule, but then we did add the actual remix map that honed in on the Main Street corridor where we had made the adjustments to give people an idea of where we were going to be. So Ben, any, any points you want to add to, to Megan's answer? Yeah, so there was there is actually a, a new feature that's that's coming out through Remix called timetables, and this is going to be coming out here in the next several weeks. Uh, everyone who is currently a planning customer is going to have access to timetables, but I think it's it's going to be a really exciting point in that when you go through and make changes to your routes, you'll be able to go through, select that the appropriate time points, um, make changes to all of the the route times that you'll be coming through and, and moving through your stops. So even one more level of detail for routing detours moving forward. Great. So yeah, watch up, watch for that coming, coming to you in the next few weeks. Uh, Adam, a question for you, and you, you covered this a little bit, but I just want to highlight it again. Was there resist, resistance from the CFO, the city council in using Remix and the reliability of Remix to budget or to cost? And can you tell us a little bit about those conversations? Sure. So um, originally, these budget estimates were fed to our department directors, um, as well as the director of finance, so they could understand how we came up with these budget estimates instead of just taking an estimated number of hours that we thought was going to happen uh, and multiplying it by an estimated rate. Um, and so they felt confident enough in the fact that they were able to see on the screen the schedules in front of them and the number of hours that the system was able to, to display to them, they're like, oh, all right, well, now we're very well informed uh, that these numbers are truly vetted by multiple people. Um, and then they, while the city council did not necessarily get to see the remix tool on display to demonstrate those impacts, uh, they were directed by our management to say, that Remix, which was a tool that the council authorized us to enter into agreements to acquire, that Remix was being used for the first time ever to help inform um, very well-informed budget estimates to help the transit budget be more refined than it has ever been in the past. So there was zero pushback and it was championed very well in a positive way. Good, to, yeah, that's great to hear. Um, a question on maybe this one will be for you, Ben. Will the timetable function in planning allow us to extract trip based GTFS? And yeah, thanks. Great question. Um, so, no, the timetable feature will not allow you to extract trip based GTFS. Now, there is a whole separate um, <clears throat> tool that Remix has developed for scheduling that allows you to do blocking, run cutting, rostering, etc. And the final output from that tool does, in fact, allow you to extract uh, trip-based GTFS. But the planning side will still just be the, the frequency-based GTFS that everyone is familiar with at this point. All right. All right. Good to know, Ben. Um, let's see. For Thomas, and probably uh, others can answer this as well. Where do you focus your service improvements for your agency when you cannot provide more service, either due to budget constraints, you know, whatever the constraint is? How do you focus service, Thomas? Yeah, so obviously one of the, one of the big ones is uh, making sure that you're using your performance measures to make sure that your buses are getting to where they need where you say they're going to be on time and that it's serving the correct locations. This is one of the big reasons why we did the route optimization um, project in the first place was we had a lot of routes that were going to places that people didn't necessarily need to go anymore, either because maybe people didn't live there in the density that they once did or the employment wasn't the density that it once was. And there were other locations in our service area that needed service that weren't getting it at all or were getting it to the level that um, it required or that it deserved. So basically just looking at your resources and figuring out how to allot them, um, we determined that we weren't allotting them correctly and that 
this major route optimization effort was um, kind of justified to make sure that the whole system was going to the places that they that we needed the system to go to. Okay, so anyone else, Megan or Adam, do you want to take that on how you're focusing service improvements when you cannot provide more service? I can go ahead and give a, a answer to that uh, from a little bit different perspective. Um, while we had some budgetary constraints, the town of Cary was not at all interested in raising any form of taxes. Um, but we were kind of held hostage in a sense because the the county that we sit in, uh, the Board of Commissioners was waiting uh, to get an approved regional plan to then submit for a referendum for a half cent sales tax to be implemented here in North Carolina or in, in Wake County. And um, we spent three and a half years waiting for that referendum to pass. And the town would not budge on increasing any aspect of our budget whatsoever. So how we were able to improve our services, even as the economy was improving, was to ensure that our facilities that were in existence were in pristine condition. Uh, we ensured that our communications to the public was absolutely phenomenal. And we worked with uh, our regional partners in our neighboring cities and towns to ensure that um, we would work in partnership with employers for transportation demand management aspect to ensure that if there are employees that did not know anything about public transportation, that we would go out there to them and help them understand what their options were. So we tried to do a little bit better job at customer service than we had been in the past while we couldn't necessarily roll out services on the road. But I will say that in the development of that Wake County Transit Plan, Remix was used heavily locally and regionally uh, through the use of Jarrett Walker and other aspects that worked on the plan. Um, so it was a phenomenal turnout, and we are now finally able to roll out new services uh, this year. Were you using Remix um, to develop the Wake County Transit Plan to both look at um, the ballot measure and then the implementation on what, where the the planning for the the funding that was coming to you? How uh, so? If I understand your question correctly, we only used Remix as a planning tool to help us understand based on what data was currently in the layers of Remix, where routes would be most effective. Uh, we did not utilize it to rely on understanding of how referendums could be or not be successful. But yeah, so you're using Remix to look at, um, you know, if we, this is where service is, will be the most effective if this funding. That's correct. Excellent. Yes. Megan, you want to add any any comments? Sure. Um, I can let you all know that Westmoreland Transit is currently in the process of a transit development plan. So some of the things that have been talked about here today are very useful for me as well. Um, it's been many, many years since we've made any adjustments to our current routes. We have two different types of riders that we serve. Um, we have a pretty steady commuter ridership base of people who go into work every day in the city of Pittsburgh. And then we have our local routes, which unfortunately we don't seem to be getting a whole lot of ridership on and actually see a bit of a decrease with those routes lately. So we're looking to remix um, as a tool that we can use to help us identify better routes of travel throughout the county. And we would like to incorporate the information that we're able to pull from remix into our transit development plan. That way we can assure that Westmoreland Transit becomes an option for people traveling around this area instead of just a last resort. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, we, we, you want to ca start capturing more choice riders that uh, transit may be your first thought of getting to where you need to go, not, oh, you know, car first, then transit. Um, we have a question. Uh, so has anyone completed a budget comparison with Remix estimates versus actual cost to operate a route? Uh, 
Um, we we double check a, a lot of what we did with Excel, just especially at first, just to make sure that what we were sending. I mean, because I, I think Remix is a great tool, but we you know wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. we are on the up and up before we started trusting it completely, and um, we we got really great results from it. Um, I, I would say um, to if, if you have kind of odd run times to just be aware of like where that bus is kind of ending on that route in remix um, because if it's not doing a full loop you might like say well it's it's um, the, the the remix is calculating the cost for like one and a half trips instead of the full two trips so just make sure like that your run times are kind of uh, fitting into your um, service hours well. Um, that, that's that's a, a suggestion that I would have when using Remix for uh, budgeting. Here's a question on metrics. So what metrics do you most commonly use to evaluate performance at the stop route or network level? Sure, so I will say that the standards um, in the town of Cary, uh, just recently, when I as I was leaving, um, the standards were really ridership, um, and we would boil it down from route down to stop level based on APCs. Uh, and so, if you have the ability to use an APC system, I would heavily rely on that data, uh, and uh, you can do some pretty innovative mapping um, exercises with that data to kind of show inflow and outflow. Um, at different geographic levels. But I will, I will say, as we are developing a more regional concept plan, that one of the, some of the standardization items that are coming out of our um, riders, or ridership per revenue hour um, is a big standard. Uh, we're looking at on-time performance as another big standard. Um, and so some of these items I'm not quite sure necessarily Ben or, or Chrissy what the availability is with incorporating them into Remix uh, for some functional layers, but those are the two big ones that come to my mind. And then of course there's some cost factors as well. We also like Adam just focus on the ridership um, and that for us is done by the route. Unfortunately at this time we have no way to keep track of those numbers based on the stops. Um, Birmingham just uh, in the past few like 12 months kind of concurrent with the TDP um, implemented and started getting data from a um, APC system uh, so that was huge um, in terms of ridership and on-time performance that's like number one and two really ridership and on-time performance um, are what we use mostly so. Okay. All right. So any um, audience out there, if you have any questions that you still have for the panelists, why don't you go ahead and ask them now in the chat box or in the Q&A. We also have been monitoring the chat box if you have any questions that you want answered um, specifically by Ben, he can answer those for you there. Uh, because, you know, we hope that you really learn some more ways to take advantage of Remix, using Remix every day to make your lives, as Megan was saying, a little less stressful, and to think about ways that you might not be using Remix now because you don't have a, a big plan that you're working on, but really to do detours, communicate with consultants, budget, do things that you are working on every day uh, using Remix to make those just a little bit less stressful for you. So I wanna thank you all again for joining the webinar. I want to make sure that, I'm pulling up some information here. Uh, I'll leave the contact information on the screen before we uh, complete the webinar today, but I don't want everyone to miss the Remix conference that's coming up very soon in three weeks on October 7th and 8th in Atlanta, Georgia. And especially if you're going to APTA Annual, we're, well, the Remix conference is the weekend before, so you definitely want to sign up. And you, what we have in store for you is we have 
lots of best practice sessions. We have a world-class lineup of transit experts. We have hours of remix expert training planned for you in one-on-one -on -one and in peer sessions. So you don't definitely don't want to miss that. And you really have a chance to interact with all of our agencies, all of our planners, executives from across the globe. And when I say across the globe, I mean that because Australia is our, we have some planners from Australia coming there. So reminder that through this Friday, you can register for a $200 discount using the promo code extended 99. So I hope that we can see you all there. If you have any questions, please, Here's our contact information. Please go ahead and, and contact any of us if you have questions on the conference. Shoot an email over to me and I, I'll be happy to answer any questions and work with you on registration. Um, so again, I want to thank our panelists today, uh, Adam Howe, Megan Uhouse, and Thomas Yule for joining us and, and really showing some ex show, sharing their expertise with our, our cust the rest of our customers and for Ben Likens to join us from Remix Headquarters to answer some of those questions you have. Here's everyone's contact information. Feel free to reach out and ask any questions you might have about the projects they're working on and, and learn more about how they're using Remix to plan every day. Um, so with that, I want to thank you for joining us. We'll send out a recap to the web on the webinar shortly and a video.